Board, which result, resulted in the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action between the Islamic Republic of Iran and six world powers that was immediately turned into an international instrument with the ratification of the United Nations Security Council. The President of Iran uh, making comments about Saudi Arabia uh, just so you know, he's referring to the... From the standpoint of international law, this instrument sets a strong precedent where for the first time, two sides, rather than negotiating peace after war, engaged in dialogue and understanding before the eruption of conflict. At this point, I deem it necessary to recognize the role of all the negotiators in achieving this agreement. We had decided to bring about a new environment while maintaining our principles, and we succeeded in doing so. Where necessary, we moved forward, and where necessary, we showed the courage for flexibility. And at each point, we made use of the full capacity of international law and showcase the potentials of constructive dialogue. The key point regarding the success of dialogue is the fact that any actor in the international system who pursues maximalist demands and does not allow space for the other side cannot speak of peace, stability, and development as in commerce and economic activity where the interests of both parties should be taken into account in politics and international relations as well, multilateralism and win-win solutions should be the basis of engagement. Mr. President, the United Nations was established to sustain global peace and security after two world wars. But unfortunately, it must be said that in most cases, this important international institution has not been successful or effective. This time, however, the United Nations made the right decision. Though we protest the adoption of unfair resolutions against the Islamic Republic of Iran and the imposition of sanctions against the Iranian nation and government as a result of misunderstanding and sometimes overt hostilities of some countries. However, we believe, as an old Iranian saying goes, the sooner you stop harm, the more benefit you will reap. Today is the very day that harm is stopped. Security Council Resolution 2231, despite some significant shortcomings, was an important development and the basis for terminating sanctions imposing resolutions against Iran. We consider as unfair the conduct of the Security Council in the past and insist that Iran, due to the important fatwa of its leader and its defense doctrine, has never had the intention of producing a nuclear weapon and, therefore, sanctioned resolutions against Iran were unjust and illegal. Sanctions by the Security Council and unilateral sanctions by some countries were based on elusive and baseless allegations and created difficult conditions for our people. But these sanctions never in any way affected the policy that we adopted and the approach we took towards negotiations. We proved in these negotiations that there is nothing on Iran's table other than logic, reason, and ethics, and where necessary, legitimate and de decisive self-defense against any kind of aggression. For which ultimately the United States of America 
was prompted and forced to set aside pressure and sanctions and choose the table of negotiations and discussions. Our seven countries and the European Union expended considerable time and diplomatic capital in these negotiations, and therefore they should exert their utmost effort to protect and implement the agreement. We deem the compliance of all parties with their commitments as the fundamental factor in the success of the implementation process of the negotiations. Parallel to the implementation of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, we also expect the nuclear weapon states to take necessary steps to fulfill their commitment of full nuclear disarmament based on Article 6 of the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Furthermore, we expect them to play a positive role in the creation of a nuclear weapons free Middle East and not to allow the Zionist regime to remain the only impediment in the way of realizing this important initiative. Mr. President, the nuclear deal, which is a brilliant example of victory over war, has managed to disper disperse the, the clouds of hostility and perhaps even the specter of another war and extensive tensions from the Middle East. The deal can and should herald a new era and lead to positive outcomes regarding the establishment of sustainable peace and stability in the region. From our point of view, the agreed-upon deal is not the final objective, but a development which can and should be the basis of further achievements to come. Considering the fact that this deal has created an objective basis and set an appropriate model, it can serve as a basis for foundational change in the region. Our policy is to continue our peace-seeking efforts in the region based on the same win-win principle and act in a way that would lead to all in the region and world benefiting from these new conditions. This opportunity can be seized in order to look to the future and avoid focusing on the past and rebuild our relationships with countries in the region, particularly with our neighbors, based on mutual respect and our common and collective interests. Unfortunately, the Middle East and North Africa has turned into one of the world's most turbulent regions with the continuation and intensification of the current condition the turmoil can spread to other parts of the world in today's interconnected and borderless world countries and regions encounter great difficulty in protecting their borders and preventing the spread of insecurity and instability the gravest and most important threat to the world today is for terrorist organizations to become terrorist states. We consider it unfortunate for national uprisings in our region to be deviated by terrorists and for the destiny of nations to be determined by arms and terror rather than the ballot box. We propose that the fight against terrorism be incorporated into a binding international document and no country be allowed to use terrorism for the purpose of intervention in the affairs of another country. We are prepared to assist in the eradication of terrorism and in paving the way for democracy and ensuring that arms do not dictate the course of events in the region.
As we aided the establishment of democracy in Iraq and Afghanistan, we are prepared to help bring about democracy in Syria as well as Yemen. We support the consolidation of power through the vote of people rather than with arms. We defend the rule of the majority that respects the rights of minorities. Today, Iran, while safeguarding its historic and cultural heritage, is looking to the future, not only the distant future, but also the near future, with a bright outlook for cooperation and coexistence. I say to all nations and all governments that we will not forget the past, but we do not wish to live in the past. We will not forget war and sanctions, but we look to peace and development. Through the joint comprehensive plan of action, we were not solely seeking a nuclear deal. We want to suggest a new and constructive way to recreate the international order an order based on mutual respect, non-intervention in the internal affairs of others, as well as on sustained cooperation and coexistence between the members of the United Nations. In order to build a peaceful future, we must learn our lessons from the bitter lessons uh, from the bitter past. We know that the only way to perpetuate peace is through development. Peace without development is merely a recess, while resentment and suspicion builds. However, peace alongside development lets anger and resentment dissipate and be replaced with hope and respect for others. We have repeatedly said that the only way to uproot terrorism in the Middle East is by targeting its underlying social, economic, and cultural causes. Economic interactions may bring about lasting security and transform the region into a haven for peace and development. After the joint comprehensive plan of action, Iran will stand ready to show that the practical path to security and stability is through the development that comes with economic engagement. Iran, with all of its economic and cultural potential, is well positioned to, be, to become a hub for export-oriented investment. Iran is also eager to show that we can all choose a lasting peace based on development and shared interests that will lead to a sustainable security rather than a volatile peace based on threats. We hope to engage with our neighbors in a wide range of social and economic cooperation, which will enable the achievement of political understanding and for even fast and even foster structural security cooperation. In the international system today, mutual economic ties are deemed the foremost factors in facilitating political cooperation and reducing security-related challenges. Mr. President, in 2013, from this very stage, I called for combating violence and extremism. Consequently, you, the representatives of the international community, unanimously gave it a seal of endorsement, and hence, the WAVE resolution came to be. The implementation of WAVE requires well-intentioned solutions and the use of experiences gained in the realm of diplomacy. I am pleased that by placing together the support for the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action with the invaluable support for WAVE, we may now devise a plan to resolve the problems of a shattered Middle East under the clause of brutality and savagery. With a view to fighting ignorance, dictatorship, poverty, corruption, terrorism, violence, and their social, political, cultural, economic, and security impacts, I would like to invite the whole world, and especially the countries of my region, 
to form a joint comprehensive plan of action to create a united front against extremism and violence. This front must create a collective and global movement to tackle regional problems in a serious manner through dialogue, prevent the slaughter of innocent people and the bombardment of civilians as well as the promotion of violence and killing of other human beings, provide for the stability in cooperation with established central governments to maintain stability. And once stability is established,